Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to the Y upgrade to 11.2. Now, um, my goal for this presentation is essentially to hopefully enlighten you with one piece of information that you may have not known about 11.2. If I get that done, then I feel like it was successful. Um, as you guys know, um, 11.2 has been out for a at least two years now. So, um, yeah, hopefully you've heard about it uh, recently. So the question really is, why would you want to upgrade now, right? So that's really what we're addressing with this presentation. Lots of clients have this mentality of, you know, if it's not broken, why fix it approach? Um, you know, we, we're working fine with our version. We don't really need to upgrade. Everything seems to be, um, running smoothly, why would we want to introduce new risks to something that's working um, perfectly fine? And while I agree with that, for the most part, um, you know, uh, if you look around, I, I mean, I, I tend to, if you look at my home, you'll see that I have a lot of things that are, a lot of people would say, why wouldn't you upgrade that? And I said, well, it's working fine. And that's true, but with technology, that, that, that approach may not necessarily work out well. So one of the things we want to discuss is what are the issues that you're going to, you may run into if you stick to whatever version you're on of EPM and, and choose not to move forward with 11.2. So obviously the, the big one is <clears throat> the longer you hold on to the version that you have, the more likely it is that you won't be able to upgrade the user's computer. Um, for most of you that have used older versions of EPM, you'll know that there are dependencies on browser versions, Java versions, and, uh, and Excel versions. And as that version gets, as the version of EPM gets older, the less likely you will be to upgrade your laptop with newer versions of that software, because the EPM version will not be certified to work against those newer components that come with a newer laptop. So now what do you do in that situation? So with some clients, depending on how far back they've gone with their version, they've had to stand up like a Citrix or some sort of remote desktop that they can log into just so that they can access the EPM version that way, which allows them to have a new laptop, but then they have to remote into this older desktop just to get to the software that they need. Now that is a workaround, it's not an elaborate workaround. You know, it's a pain, but it will work temporarily. Now the, the bigger issue is security vulnerabilities, right? So if you haven't upgraded yet, chances are you're probably getting a lot of pressure. And in the last two years of all the upgrades we've done, I'd say 90%, maybe 95% of the reason why people are upgrading is because their IT department is pushing them to get off, either get off those servers or there's so many vulnerabilities with the backend components that are running EPM that they're encouraging them to move to the latest version. And uh, that's one of the big risks that you um, run into if you choose to stay on an older version of EPM. Um, <clears throat> And to that point, there's also the end of life issue, right? So, you know, for those of you that are still running Windows 2008, I believe that end of life happened a while ago. For those of you that are running Windows 2012, I think you may have a year or so left of support. Um, so, and of course, there's other issues with older versions of WebLogic, older versions of Java, et cetera. Um, and, on, and the, another topic to, to discuss, and those of you who are familiar with EAS, which is a way to administer S-Base that has a client piece to it that runs on your laptop. Oftentimes, if you have Java set up on your laptop to automatically update, suddenly your EAS isn't working. And that's because EAS is tied to a much older version of, of, of um, Java. It's either, it'll either work with six or seven, depending on the version of EPM that you're on. So if you automatically upgrade to eight, nine, or 10, now you're gonna run into issues. 
So as far as the EPM 11.2 upgrade, um, what exactly does it change, right? So I'm going from 11.1.2x, I'm going to 11.2, what changes? Well, one of the things that, that one of the main reasons where the, the, the upgrade occurred, or one of the main reasons Oracle developed this upgrade, is to address a lot of the aging backend technology. So with this version, you get the Fusion middleware 12G, which as of the current version that's out, I believe they're up to Fusion middleware 12214. <clears throat> um, Java 1.8, and there's a release number that goes with that, and that keeps changing as the new versions come out. There's also uh, now compatibility with Windows 2016 and 2019, as well as, as of, I believe, 11 to 5 or 6. Now there's compatibility with Linux 7. And then, of course, there's the database, um, the, the relational databases that they support, um, which also was another reason why people have to get off the older versions, right? So it still supports 11 to as well as 12 1, but more, more, more importantly, it supports 18. 18C, 19C, as well as SQL Server 2016, 17, and 19. Um, if you, uh, if you, one of the things that people ask about is the SBase component. So underneath the covers, SBase is still using the 11.124 version of it. Over time, we believe this is going to be replaced with SBase 21C, and the future of EAS will be replaced by a web front end. But um, you know we're still that's still being worked out as they you know work on compatibility issues and, and certifying that component. <clears throat> Another thing to note is if anybody used Adobe Flash Player for anything outside of Calc Manager, um, any application that used Adobe Flash Player, you probably knew as of 2020, I believe, that they stopped um, they stopped supporting that product. In fact. It was actually pretty cool how they did it. Somehow they managed to like discontinue its use. Like they, it's almost like they pressed the button and it stopped working anywhere it was installed. So <clears throat> if you um, if you do use Calc Manager and the graphic component where you're looking at the Calc scripts that are written and you want to see it in its graphical form, that used to use Adobe Flash Player to show you the graphical uh, version of that script. Well, now it's it's no longer um, supported to use Adobe Flash. So if you are using Adobe Flash, you'll notice that that component doesn't work. Um, so now that's been with 11.2, that's no longer um, dependent on Adobe Flash. And I, believe, I, I don't know what engine, I believe it's Java, but it's now utilizing another technology, which will show you the graphical interface again. Sorry. Um, there's also new browser support, which include uh, Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, as well as Firefox. I know that's big for a lot of folks because uh, IT was pushing people to get off their old browsers. Um, I recently had a client that was on such an, uh, uh, a much older version of EPM, and they still had to use IE11 with enterprise mode turned on in order to access their environment. So, you know, the ability to use the latest and greatest versions of the browsers is, is very important. And I'm glad that Oracle is moving in that direction. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and for those of you that do use DRM, there are specific versions of Firefox and IE that are now compatible with the latest version of DRM. Um, there's also going to be ongoing support for defects and third-party certifications and enhancements through at least 2032. That used to be 2030 when it first came out. As we get newer versions of 11.2, that time gets extended. So right now, if you were to move to 11.2, you'll be supported up until 2032. Um, it requires, oh, by the way, if at any point during this presentation, if you have any questions, please you can use the Q&A box or 
you can throw it in the chat window and we'll address them at the end of the presentation. If as much as we can, as much as we have time for. Um, now, one of the things, and we'll get into some of these details a little further down through the presentation, but one of the biggest issues or things to note about this upgrade is that it is an out of place install. What that means is that you will need new hard. Obviously, since you're getting a new Fusion middle, all the backend components are basically new. So you can't just do an in-place upgrade because all those components have to be replaced. So the only way to really upgrade to this version is to stand up new hardware, which basically means either if you're on Windows, you got to stand up a 2016 or a 2019 server. If you're using Linux, you have to stand up a Linux 7 server. So that we can install the 11.2 software there and then migrate your applications and data over. And for those of you wondering, well, <clears throat> where do we migrate from? You can only migrate from 11.124. You cannot migrate from any earlier releases. So for those of you wondering, well, what is discontinued as uh, with 11.2? Um, there are quite a few components that are no longer in use. That includes, for planning, you have strategic financing, crystal ball, the simplified user interface, which I don't know many people that use it anyway, workforce planning module, the CapEx module, the uh, project financial planning, as well as offline planning. Um, for financial management, they're getting rid of the FM analytics component, which, again, that was one of those um, modules that not too many people use, but it was useful as far as knowing what was what uh, resources were being utilized when you did certain um, certain tasks within financial management. S space analytics link is no longer available, and to be clear, that was a component that was I believe they stopped developing it as of eleven one two two, but they continued providing it as part of the uh, software download. That's no longer available. Um, there's also quantitative management and reporting for solvency is no longer there. And the HFM copy app utility is no longer available. Now, <clears throat> I will say that um, while they do provide other ways of moving your applications around, a lot of people really love that utility. And as far as I know, and I've tried it myself, it still works with the um, latest version, 11.2. Um, it's still able to copy, you know, basically the copy app utility is essentially a, a, a SQL server, a SQL script wrapped around a nice GUI interface, um, which takes ta the HFM tables from one database and moves them over to another. Or if you're moving it within the same environment, It'll copy it to another application on that same database. Um, it seems to work fine, but you run the risk if you do copy an application like that, where Oracle may not support you if you call and, and, and let them know that this is how you move your HFM application. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, disclosure management is no longer available. And within the reporting world, right, so which used to be called Hyperion BI Plus, interactive reporting is gone, production reporting is gone, and finally, web analysis is gone. I know there were talks about getting rid of that previous version, and, and it was still around, um, but I, it's definitely gone as of 11.2. The Oracle EPM mobile app is gone. Again, I don't know many people that used it, but it's no longer available. And this is probably the most important component that's gone for, for some clients, and that's EPMA. Um, if you were managing your metadata via EPMA, you now have to either switch to native, meaning you use the native dimensions that build them within HFM or planning, or you use some, uh, or you use DRM, which it, uh, which Oracle is now providing with a limited use license within the download of 11.2. And we'll get into that a little for, uh, more detail later. 
<clears throat> so some of the new features that may or may not be available as of now, but will be coming with 11.2 within Hyperion planning and support for attributes and data entry and reporting, smart push, which, you know, if anybody has looked at some of the cloud applications, that's one of the cool things that you can do in the cloud that's coming in the on-prem world. Valid intersections. In FDMEE, you'll have the ability to do a little more dimension building and metadata load. Now you were able to do metadata loads before, but it's becoming, uh, they're, they're adding easier functionality with that component now. Um, Smart View now supports Chrome with the web launch. So something, you know, when you launch Smart View and you choose a uh, data source or a uh, private connection or something like that, it will launch a browser to log in. So that browser that launches, it supports Chrome now. And then there's a limited functional release of Office 365. And for HFM, there's automatic consolidation, which is great. Um, there's enhanced insights and archiving and na native metadata. Um, for HPCM or profitability and cost management, they have expanded custom calc logic as well as point of view copy support for large, for large outlines. Uh, in financial reporting, there's uh, the ability to run book, books and batches to MS Office, uh, multi-report editing, simplified uh, database, as well as uh, the having, uh, the discontinuing of, um, for those of you that have used the financial um, reporting studio on your desktop, meaning it was a client that used to download. As most of you probably know, that was discontinued, I think, maybe a few years ago at least. Um, if you were on 11124, they stopped delivering that with the later patches. Um, with 11.2, it's not even an option. You have to use the web studio, which looks very much like, and it's gotten a lot, almost on par with what the um, client had, you know, the, the one that you used to install on your laptop. It looks essentially the same, um, but it's definitely a lot easier to maintain different versions when you use the web studio, because once you upgrade the servers, the studio gets upgraded as well. Whereas before, when you upgraded the server to a new patch level, you have to reinstall everyone that had the client with the latest version of that client. And that used to be, it used to be an effort. Um, so as we mentioned before, um, the, 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 the big lift, the big change uh, for 11.2 is the uh, Fusion middleware component. Um, as I mentioned before as well, FBase 21C, on-prem, once the on-prem, uh, so, so for those of you that don't know, FBase 21C right now is only available for Linux. Um, I believe the Windows version is coming out in the near future. It, um, I, I thought it was gonna come out this year, but it may not till maybe first quarter of next year. I don't know for certain though. Um, but those are, those are things that have to fall in place before we can, uh, make it part of the 11.2 um, um, inventory, right? So that you can connect it to your, let's say, planning or, or, or other components within your EPM world. Oops, sorry. Um, repository simplification, that essentially just means that um, they've uh, simplified some of the uh, tables and foundation services, as well as got gotten rid of some of the complexities around reporting. Um, so as you guys know, if you're familiar with the services and the way reporting used to work, there was an RA framework component to it that used to have <clears throat> work alongside of the reporting web server. Um, that RA framework get, is totally gone. All right, so and to that point, um, 
when, while the strategic director for Oracle is to move to narrative reporting, um, you can continue, like I mentioned before, to use the uh, financial reporting for both on-prem and the cloud. So the cloud has a piece, you know, basically has a, when you go to EPM cloud, you will see that there is something similar to Web Studio there as well. And that's the date I was looking for before. So FR Studio, the one that's installed on your desktop, has been deprecated since May of 2017. So it's been a while um, since they stopped supporting it. Um, and you, if you haven't started using the new FR Web Studio, you really should if you plan on moving to 11.2 in the near future. So what are my options? How do I upgrade if I am on 11? one two x so these are the um the, you know these are the options that are available to you and depending uh, depending on how far back you are will dictate how painful that upgrade may be and, and i'll explain in a moment so right now um <clears throat> if you're on 11 one two x and you want to move to the latest version which is which is 11 two seven um you have a few options available to you um if you're on 11 1 2 3 or earlier um you must upgrade to 11 1 2 4 first now um some of you may be wondering um but why can't i just do go directly to 11 2 from 11 to 11 1 2 3 or earlier the main reason is for those of you that don't know 11.124 was a major, there was a major code release and a major change within the back end code of the software when 11.124 came, came out. So they replaced a lot of the Microsoft based um, applications like HFM and a lot of the, the uh, dependencies that were built into, uh, that were using .NET technology and they replaced it with Java. So in order to go from 11, one two four i'm sorry from 11 one two x to 11 two you have to at least be at that latest version of the 11 one two series which is 11 one two four um so what does that mean if you're on 11 one two three or 11 one two two or 11 one two one um there is going to be a few hops that you're going to have to make um so I know I, I've seen some presentations in the past where some people suggest creating a staging area for the 11, 1, 2, 4 environment so that you can move from 11, 1, 2, 2 to 11, 1, 2, 4, let's say, um, as an example. Um, so that would be sort of an interim environment that you would set up and then go from 11, 1, 2, 4 to 11, 2. The problem with that, and I know this from experience, is that if there are any issues that occur or arise as a result of that upgrade, when you call Oracle for support and they find out that you may, you went from 11, 1, 2, 1, or 1, 2, 2, or 1, 2, 3, to 11, 1, 2, 4 using an out of place method, um, that's not a supported method of upgrading. So the only upgrade method that Oracle supports if you're going from 11, 1, 2, 3, 2, or 1 to 11, 1, 2, 4 is in place. So basically you have to overwrite your existing environment with 11, 1, 2, 4. Now, what I have done for some clients is made a copy of their, let's say if they are, if they are on 11, 1, 2, 2, is created another 11, 1, 2, 2 environment which is identical to the one we currently have, and then do an in-place upgrade of that environment. So that becomes the staging environment, but that way, at least if you do run into an issue after the upgrade uh, or during the upgrade process, it's, you're still with the, you know, you're still conforming to Oracle standards as far as the upgrade process, because you did do an in-place upgrade from 11.122 to 11.124. Um, and you're still not risking your live environment in case something does go wrong, where everyone would, you know, be down if something did go wrong. I mean, it, it is definitely more work and it will take more time 
but it's probably the least the the least risk of risk way of going to it. Um, and then of course, if you once you go from eleven one two four, as I mentioned before, to eleven two, they only support out of place upgrades, and there really isn't any other way to do it. There is no in place option. Um, like I said before, because the back end software to all of these components are all being replaced by newer versions, it's impossible to do an in place upgrade of 11.124 to 11.2. <clears throat> so, definitely, it's something that you, if you are looking to upgrade, you're going to have to plan for getting new software, uh, hardware in place to support the new software. And make sure that you know you comply with the compatibility matrix that Oracle has provided with the 11.2 version that's out. Um, initially, when it first came out, I believe when 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 11.2 first came out in December of 2019, I believe it was only supporting Windows 2019, which is great because that was the version that was out then. But most people at the time didn't really want to go to the latest and greatest version of Windows Server. Um, fortunately, a few versions later, or I think, I believe it was maybe 11.24, they started uh, certifying 11, uh, Windows Server 2016, which is, uh, I believe, most clients have moved on to. Um, I don't know too many clients that have gone to straight from like 2012 to 2019, but definitely the majority of people have at least Windows 2016. Um, and as far as Linux is concerned, I believe I believe as of the 11.25 or 2.6 version, they started supporting Linux 7. Prior to that, it was only Windows only update. So if you are on, if you happen to have already made the 11.2 switch, um, there are a number of things that or, or hops that you'll have to go through if you want to get to 11 to 7. And this kind of outline, outlines what you need to do. Oh, another thing to, let me go back to this slide. Another thing you, you should keep in mind is if you are going from an earlier release of 11 1 2, like 3 2 or 1, to 11 1 2 4, you will most likely have to open a technical SR with Oracle to get access to the 11.124 software that's upgradable. And the reason I say that is because there is a 900 version that's available on the e-delivery site. That version does not allow you to do an in-place upgrade of earlier releases. Um, that version was specifically released for new people that are new to EPM and are doing new installs and have no intention of migrating from an older version. Um, for whatever reason, they removed the 11.124 software that is upgradable. I'm guessing it's because, well, that, that would be true for the 900 version as well. But since it's not support, as of, by the way, as of this month, December of 2021, 11.124 will no longer be supported. So if you haven't gotten off that version or any earlier version, um, this is the last month to do so. Oh, before you're out of support. And it's another reason why we had this presentation this month as well, because it coincides with when you have to get off that version. So assuming you have upgraded to 11.2, and this happened to a client of mine recently where they were on 11.121 and they wanted to move to the latest version, um, there are some hops you have to go through. Um, so this kind of outlines those hops. If you're on 11.2, you got to jump to 11.22, then 11.24, then 11.26, then 11.27. Now, the good news is all those are in place upgrades. The bad news is, depending on how long you waited to do this upgrade, um, you may have to open a technical SR with Oracle to get access to those interim versions that you need to hop on to. Um, and the ones that are outlined here with an asterisk re represent 
those that you would have to open a technical SR with Oracle for. Um, the process is fairly simple and you know the upgrade processes are fairly simple make sure you read the readme's that are associated with them so they you know, each one has maybe some additional steps required to to fully uh, upgrade to that version but it's not impossible and it's definitely a lot easier than the older version So let's let's recap a little on the on-prem update. So on-prem EPM is not going away. Um, it's uh, eleven two is the as far as Oracle is concerned is the last version that's going to be out for EPM. But as you have seen, they continually re every quarter they're releasing a new um, update of eleven two. So for all I know, you know. They might go to 11.2.22 or 25 or 30. Um, they keep adding new updates, new features, new fixes as every quarter goes, uh, uh, as every quarter passes. Like I mentioned before, 11.2.7 is the version that's available now. If you want to download it, you can download it um, today and go straight from 11.1.2.4 to 11.2.7. That's another thing. We'll talk about that in a second, but that's another thing I really like about this version that was not the case with the older version that not a lot of people talk about. Um, 11.1.2 is an out of place upgrade, as, like I mentioned before. EPMA is dead, and it is going to be replaced by DRM, restricted use license. So what do I mean by that? <clears throat> um, basically, EPA, um, I'm sorry, DRM. DRM restricted, the, the restricted use means that it's only meant, the one that comes with EPM is only meant to be used with the EPM products that you're installing in that environment. So for those that purchased DRM in the past to let's say manage your metadata for several products outside of EPM, including let's say PeopleSoft, ERP, some other, um, product that's not Oracle based. Um, if you download the version that comes with uh, with EPM, that version is licensed only for use within the products that come with EPM. So it basically is to replace EPMA, right? So if you're using it to manage S-based planning and HFM metadata, you're good, right? Because that those are products that come with EPM. If you're using it to manage metadata outside of that, unless you have a license or already had a license for DRM, for using DRM for use with other products, um, then um, you would be out of compliance with their license if you use it outside of that. Um, also, data governance is not part of that, I believe, as well as I think uh, the analytics. Um, the, as I mentioned before, through that list, there's a lot of products that won't be part of 11.2 that used to be part of 11.124, which makes sense because the strategic direction of Oracle is to make the EPM on-prem version <clears throat> um, as streamlined as possible to migrate to the cloud whenever you're ready to do that, right? So obviously the cloud is the ultimate strategy for Oracle. We, we want everybody to move to the cloud. But if uh, you're not ready and you want to stay on-prem for a, a while longer, we're going to try to make it as easy as possible to bring you over to the cloud. So by removing some of those components that are not compatible with the cloud, like EPMA and some of the other stuff I mentioned, it makes the transition that much easier. Um, 11, the 11, another thing to know is the 11.2 version of EPM joins uh, Oracle's uh, application unlimited. And what does that mean? It means, like I mentioned before, Premier support is continuous until 2032. Um, they annually uh, review it to see if they can extend that date. 
They continue make they continue making enhancements based on customer needs and priorities. Um, they receive um, there's going to be new features and you know add, they probably won't come as quickly as the cloud and that was always the case, but they will kind of retrofit some new features onto on prem as necessary. And there is going to there's going to they are going to continue to do research and development in uh, the on prem version as well, which at one point. It was it was it was uh, rumored that research and development had stopped. Uh, ETMA is not supported. DRM will be replaced. Um, one of the things we want to discuss about DRM is that um, there are nice features that ETMA did not have that DRM does have. Um, for those of you not familiar with DRM, I would definitely suggest you give it a shot. Um, it is a learning curve, I'm not going to lie, it's not like ETMA, it's a very different product, but with that comes a lot of cool features. Um, and uh, it does work specifically with uh, SQL, I mean, sorry, it does work specifically uh, with Oracle database backend, but it also can connect to SQL. Um, there is no data government, uh, DRG, which is, um, basically the governance module of DRM. There's no DRM analytics. And uh, you cannot read feeds from non-on-prem ETMS, as I mentioned before. So the, <clears throat> the following section is basically some tips or you know, insights that I'm providing you that I found on based on my experience with 11C. Um, the patching is simplified. But don't wait too long. So what does that mean? So every quarter, they're gonna, like I mentioned before, they're going to release a new version of 11.2. At least that's how it's been up to now. So that's why we're up to 11.27. Um, one of the nice things is that um, for those of you familiar with patching with the 11.124 or 11.12x version, is that you always have if you did a new install. Um, you always have to start off with the base version of the software, which is what was available on e-delivery. You install the base version, and then you have to apply a ton of patches to get you up to the latest patch release that was out at the time. That could take a lot of time. Um, you know, oftentimes we, we could spend hours on each server, you know, just bringing them up to speed with the latest patches. Um, by Doing it this way, every release, every quarter when they release a new version, that new version includes all the fixes that occurred before. <clears throat> so if you are on a, let's say, 11.26 version or 11.25 version, you should upgrade to 11.27. Um, by, by upgrading to 11.27, not only do you get all the new uh, updates and fixes, you may get some new features as well, um, but you don't have to run OPAC at all. Um, if, if you continually upgrade your version every quarter, um, you you will probably never have to touch OPAC. Now, there are some one-off patches that may come out if you have an emergency, um, or you may need to fix it right now. You can't wait till the quarter, the next quarter, to get the latest release. Then you may have to deal with OPAC. <clears throat> but for the most part, if you could wait, just wait to get the latest uh, 11.2 version that comes out and apply the update that way. Now, the reason I say don't wait too long is because I had a client that was on 11.2.1. They waited until, you know, recently, and they said they wanted to upgrade to the latest version of 11.2. And because they waited so long, we had to open up a few SRs for them so that they can um, go through the various hops they needed to get to 1127. And it's not that it, it's not like you're not going to be able to get there. It's just that it'll be mean there's a little more work involved as far as opening technical SRs with Oracle to get those older versions. Now, one thing to note when you do upgrade to those latest versions, 1126, 1127, sorry, 1127 in this case. Um, you cannot roll back. So it really is similar to a maintenance release. You're from the 11.1.2 world. 
it's very similar to a maintenance release in the sense that once you apply it, unlike OPATCH, you can't roll back to your 11.26 version if you, if you decide, I don't like this version or there's something weird with this version or it's causing us problems. Um, your only option at that point would be to, it, hopefully you backed up your environment, um, you could restore to that <clears throat> um, to that point wherever you backed up, or you would probably have to uninstall the version that you have and reinstall 11.26 or 11.25, depending on the version that it comes from. So that is one thing, one warning if, if you upgrade. Now, I haven't seen any issues with these upgrades that would, would require me to want to go back to a previous version. But you know, you never know, right? Things happen. Um, the apply update process is fairly straightforward, um, very similar to the maintenance release process in the sense that when you apply the update, it detects what needs to be updated on that server and it updates it. The most that you'll have to do, and like I said, you want to check the uh, release notes or the readmes for that release. Um, oftentimes, you may have to rerun the configuration utility and maybe redeploy an app or so. For example, with 11.127, they made changes to the FDME um, Java module. So as a result of that, that is a component that you will have to redeploy once you apply the 11.27 update. Um, you don't have to, you know, your data will still stay intact. You don't have to do any crazy configuration changes. You just have to rerun the configuration and redeploy that Java web app. Um, as I mentioned before, reporting has changed a bit. There's no more RA framework service. Um, I will say, and I don't know if you guys can see that screen well enough, but um, if you look at the right uh, left side of the of screen of that on that screenshot, you probably notice for those of you that are responsible for security or shared services, that reporting was always under that reporting and analysis project folder. Um, with 11.2 on the right, you'll see that that's no longer called reporting and analysis for obvious reasons. They got rid of reporting and analysis. So now it's just called a document repository. Um, you can create a, another folder called reporting and move that to under, underneath just so it makes more sense so it doesn't have to sit under default application group. But the, the core component of it will still be called document repository. As a result of that, and um, I have yet to see anyone that didn't have to do this, um, you probably will have to reapply security. If you had security applied to specific um, items underneath reporting and analysis in the past, you will probably have to reapply security based on the fact that the new shared services object has a different name. Um, so depending on how complex or granular your security is within reporting, that may or may not be some work, you know, some, a good amount of work you have to consider if you choose to update. Um, as far as the reports, I mean, depending on the amount of reports you have, LCM does with the earlier releases, there were some issues with LCM, with earlier releases of 11.2, where there were some issues with LCMing reports over <clears throat> late um, the last few upgrades we did, LCM seems to work fine. Um, and of course, you always have the option of using workspace as a method of exporting and importing reports, if that's the only, if you only have, let's say, a handful of reports probably a lot easier to do it that way um, than having to do it through LCM, but the choice is yours. Um, S-based confusion. Um, I recently spoke to a client that told me that they were informed, and I always tell people, if you're unsure about this, please check with your Oracle, Oracle sales rep, just to double check. Um, when 11.2 first came out, there was some S-based, the confusion around S-based and what 
was licensed or what wasn't licensed. So um, this is kind of like our summary of what should be the case now, I believe. <clears throat> um, S-Base currently works exactly as it did before. So you, you, know, you don't need to move to S-Base 21C or some other version of S-Base. Um, obviously, if you're using S-Base with planning, that's still supported as is. The real question uh, revolved around people who had S-Base only queues. For those of you that did have S-Base only queues, you should have had um, an S-Base only license for those queues in the past. As long as you have that S-Base only license, you can continue using S-Base for S-Base only queues. Um, I believe there was some reference to reports that couldn't be migrated if they used S-Base as a data source or um, I don't know that to be true today with this version. Uh, I, you can create F-Base as a data source within FR, as well as migrate reports that use FR as a data source. I mean, that use F-Base as a data source. Um, you may have to recreate those database connections because obviously your server names would be different, but they should work just as they did before. As I mentioned before, S space is still on 11124, but don't, because it's on 11, don't, 11124, don't think that you should just take your 11124 S space server and try to attach it to your 112 install. Um, although it is 11124 underneath the covers, it is wrapped around all the new compatibility components that allow it to be compatible with Windows 2016, the new web logic, et cetera. So I don't, I mean, I don't know anyone that's tried to attach their old S-Base server to 11.2, but I definitely wouldn't recommend it because there are a lot of interconnections between the modules that obviously would need to be in place. Um, even though 11.124 and the new covers comes with uh, EPM 11.2, my guess is that they wouldn't communicate well if you tried to use your old uh, server. Um, configuration changes. Most services remain the same. So for those of you that have start and stop scripts that reference the service name, chances are 90% of those service names won't change. They'll be the same name changes, the same name. Um, <clears throat> as of 11.127, uh, there won't be a need for using the web logic for running web logic admin before you run the other services. There was a dependency on that with the early versions of 11.2. As of 11.27, you only have to do, you only have to run the um, web logic admin component for the first time that you start those services. After that, you can leave it off. Um, and you'll see that I highlighted that there because there is a way to create your web, uh, a, a Windows service out of it if you choose to, but you don't need to have it run. <clears throat> Another thing to note is that Node Manager is now part of the services that will need to be started. Um, depending on how many modules you ran in the past, um, you may have had Node Manager. I think it used to be a requirement, I believe, if you had account reconciliation and maybe some of the other modules. Um, but from the majority of EPM clients, Node Manager was not a thing that you have to worry about. You do have to start that service today. It is important. Um, the other major change is that the OHS service is no longer available. So similar to how uh, over here on this, sorry, let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. Similar how um, over here on the screen, we have Oracle Process Manager. Um, the, uh, there used to be an Oracle Process Manager for OHS. As of this version, OHS Oracle Process Manager is no longer available. So what does that mean? Essentially, that means that the web component or the HTTP component of your EPM installation will either have to will have to either be started manually through a command, or you can write a script 
to run it. But either way, it, it you know there isn't a service to start it up. Now you you can I haven't tried this, but you can try to create a service from the script. <clears throat> um, I haven't done that yet, and I don't know if others ha have yet. But I'm sure someone will figure that out. I'm hoping that Oracle will eventually uh, make. HTTP, the HTTP service, a service again, so that we can manage all the services in one place and not have to worry about that one off, um, be either running it manually or making sure it runs as part of a larger script. And another thing to be aware about is the RCU process. So because of this security vulnerabilities that existed with older versions of WebLogic, the newer versions of WebLogic have moved a lot of the metadata associated with WebLogic onto database. As a result of that, there's a new RCU or repository creation utility process that we need to run for every server that has a WebLogic component in your EPM environment, which is pretty much every server except if you have an SBase only server, because SBase doesn't technically. Uh, utilize that logic, even though it does install it there for some reason. Um, so the RCU process is time consuming, meaning you, it will, for those of you that used to, you know, let's say if it used to take you X amount of time to set up an environment, it's going to take you a little longer now because now you have to add that um, aspect to your installation. It definitely makes it more secure. Sure, it definitely uh, puts it in line for easier migration to later version, but it's more work in, in the front end. Um, you will need to be a DBA or a service, uh, um, a system admin, for those of you that use SQL Server, to run this process. Um, a lot of people have tried, you know, lots of IT groups don't like giving DBA or SA access. So, you know, they kind of give you power user or something equivalent. It's not going to work. You have to have DBA or SA access. And if that means you have to get on a Zoom call with the DBA and have them log in, then that's fine. Have them do that. But just make sure you, because you, it's going to fail. And if it fails, you cannot continue on with the configuration process. Um, <clears throat> if you have Java components that don't start, like, Everything else seems to be working, but your web logic servers are not starting. There's a good chance something went wrong with that RCU database setup. <clears throat> In my experience, that's usually tied to that. Um, because you'll notice during the setup, the configuration process, everything else pretty much looks and feels the same as it did with 11.1.4. Um, that's the only component that's different, and it's directly tied to web logic. Um, now, the good news is once once you get through that RCU setup and your configuration is complete and you're functionally tested your environment and everything's working, you'll never have to touch RCU again. Um, it is a one-time only process that you have to run through. Um, and uh, I believe that's it. We do have some questions, so I'm going to try to look in here and see. Um, we got someone asked regarding the loss of EPMA. You mentioned you can use DRM 11.2 instead. Can you also use EDM to manage metadata on 11.2? <clears throat> That's a good question. I, I do not believe, I, I don't know if EDM can export. Now, keep in mind, EDM, similar to DRM, exports a flat file, right? So. In both cases, DRM and EDM, they're not directly tied to the product where they can push the metadata to each of those um, applications and have them automatically now have new metadata. It does produce a flat file, which you then have to import. I, I'll have to double check on that. I don't know if, I know EDM obviously works with all the new EPM cloud products but I'm not sure if it spits out flat files for the on-prem versions of those EPM files. So I have to double check. Oh, okay. So 
version. So someone mentioned that S based Windows version may be available. So that's good to know. Um, and I think that if anybody else has a question, you know, you can feel free to ask me. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if uh, Brianna is still on. Do you know if anyone else asked any other questions? I do not um, see any additional questions, but um, if you do have any questions or if something comes up to later, just email us at um, info at interrel.com and I will drop that in the chat for you. And we will for sure uh, get that over to David. Um, yeah, so I just put that in the chat for everyone. Thank you very much. And we're almost at the top of the hour, so this time worked out perfectly. Thank you for um, coming to this presentation, and hopefully you'll have a great holiday and a great New Year. And hopefully we'll hear from you soon.